Hi everybody, I'm gonna try to get this channel to be eligible for YouTube's partner program. Kinda embarrassing, I did not know there was such a thing. So apparently in order to qualify for this program, I need an unrealistic number of views as well as a thousand subscribers on my channel. Now, I don't want to be pushy when it comes to getting subscribers. If you feel like you enjoyed my content, you felt that it was helpful, or you just enjoy the way I make my videos, then please leave a like on my videos. For viewers that are here for the first time, hello, please consider supporting the channel. But if you feel that the channel is not up to standard, please give me some time, I'll get better, and earn your subs. You see, when this channel does qualify for YouTube's partner program, I will have access to YouTube's creator support, which may or may not be useful, I don't know, but I do like to learn. And apparently it allows the channel to make money. I did not know you could do that. I thought YouTubers make money some other way. I'm not too sure. Probably a very small amount, but hopefully enough to buy some oat milk. That's what I like to drink while creating content. What's up everybody, it's Wasabi and I'm back with another review. This video is not sponsored by anyone or any brand. These thoughts are my own and my personal experiences with the product. In this video, we're looking at the Atlantis Mini Pro by Lamzu. With all Lamzu packaging, they're gonna give a little introduction on the left side of the box. Now just so you know, the English might come off a little strange, but just bear with it, this shouldn't affect your overall impressions of the mouse itself. It comes with a standard dongle that lets you go up to 1000 Hz. They've also included a nice pouch for your mouse. It comes with this USB dongle adapter. It looks super cool. I like how it looks like a crystal. It's a very nice alternative to, you know, those standard solid plastic dongles. Now here's some footage from when I first got the mouse. You get this USB-C braided cable and what's special about it is that if you look right here you notice the end of the cable is bent and this is a little something that helps reduce drag when you do use the mouse with the cable. They've included additional mouse feet for you to choose. You get this set with much wider skates in the front and back as well as dot skates if that is something you like to try. They've also thrown in a set of grip tape. This is really nice to include and you get the instruction manual. As always with all Lamzu packaging, the construction of the box is really solid. I like it. I think it's very presentable. You feel kind of bad throwing it away because this is such a solid box. Hey everybody, before I dive deeper into the mouse, there's some things I gotta mention about the brand and the mouse itself. So Lamzu is quite a small company compared to some of the bigger names when it comes to gaming peripherals. So there might be some things you find are not as polished as the big brands out there. For the mouse, I'm gonna say this right at the start of the video. This mouse is designed for claw grip. So if you're strictly a palm grip user or finger tip user, this video is not gonna convince you to give this mouse a try. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just being very lame. Let's get into it. The design of the Atlantis Mini looks rather basic. But when you do flip it over, you can tell that a lot of love went in the bottom side of the mouse. You see, all Lamzu mice are designed with the ultra lightweight factor in mind. They don't save on weight by cutting on the top side of the mouse, no. They cut at the bottom and they do such a good job with the design. I just can't help but flip it over and stare at the bottom because it really is the best looking part of the mouse. And this is something that applies for all Lamzu mice because if you look at the packaging, what you see in the front of the box is the bottom of the mouse, not the top side. And you can tell by this that the bottom of the mouse is the part that Lamzu put a lot of attention and detail to. There are some little details that all Lamzu mice share and those are things that I really do like. With all Lamzu mice, you see the scroll wheel has this wonderful pattern on its track. And if you take a look at Thorn, it has the same pattern as well. Second thing you'll notice is where Lamzu places their logo just at the left hand corner of the mouse. And it goes the same with the Lamzu Thorn. It's a very nice gold print. Looks classy. I like it. And the last little detail I noticed besides the crazy cutouts they do at the bottom of the mouse is that you can see the scroll wheel from the bottom. Look at that. It's an interesting detail that I do appreciate. I like it when brands bother to put effort in the little details of the mouse. It makes the overall enjoyment of owning their mice feel a little more special. Okay, before going into more detail of the shape and feel of the mouse, I just want you all to know that my hand size is 17.5 by 9, which is a small hand size. 
This particular size of the Atlantis is the Mini, and it is a pretty small mouse. If you're used to more traditional sizes that big brands do, you may very well feel surprised at how small this feels. At least that's how I first felt when I got my hands on this mouse. And I bet you're thinking, Wasabi small hands plus mini mouse equals best mouse of the year. Or well, not exactly, and I'll explain why. You see, shape and fit is indeed important. And for small hands, a small mouse is fitting. But this doesn't make it my favorite mouse size ever. And that is because I'm well adapted to regular sizes. You see, there are gamers with hand sizes that are much more suitable for medium to large mice, but they very much prefer using a mini size. This is a great size for me on paper, yes. But as a long time gamer, a mini size did take me quite a while to get used to because I've been gaming with regular mice sizes for the longest time. And in recent years, the mini form factor has been gaining a lot of popularity amongst gamers. But still, I'm very much used to regular sizes. The experience between a mini size and a regular size is quite different. So just keep that in mind. At the end of the day, size is a preference that only you know best. The Lamzu Atlantis Mini is very much designed for the claw grip user. And here are some elements in the mouse design that supports that. You see the extent to which the sides slant towards the bottom gives you a very secure grip as you hold the mouse. Compared to mice with flat sides, you don't need much pressure to hold the mouse in place. You can see that the sides slant towards the middle left and right. This feels great for a claw grip, which is what this mouse is designed for. On the top side, there's not much curves, but when you flip it over, you can see how the mouse curves inwards. It's almost like the shape of a pear. Second thing that makes this mouse very comfortable for the claw grip, and that is how the front of the mouse slopes quite aggressively towards the base of the mouse, right at the front side. And because of this, when you claw grip or aggressive claw grip the mouse, it's it feels rather comfortable with normal mice where the front end is a little higher than this. It makes your hand feel tilted at an upward angle. But with the Atlantis being so low at the front end, you can see that it's a rather comfortable angle even with an aggressive claw grip. Last but not least, the back end of the mouse is rather wide and the hump is raised pretty high, giving you a nice amount of contact support at this portion of your palm. So here's some footage of how the Atlantis Mini looks like while using the claw grip, palm grip, and fingertip grip. I didn't feel comfortable using the palm grip or the fingertip grip with this mouse, but it is a mouse that is designed for claw grip. So if you prefer using a palm and fingertip grip, you might want to look at some of Lamzu's other options. With the Atlantis Mini, there are a total of five programmable buttons, the left and right mouse click, scroll click, two side buttons, and there is a DPI button that you can program, but I'm just going to mention those that you'd normally use on the fly. The switches on these are Huano's transparent blue shell pink dot switches. To the casual consumer, these are basically mechanical switches. And just for your information, these switches are special requests from Lamzu to Huano to produce those switches according to Lamzu's preference for this mouse. The feel of these switches, they feel like they are on the lighter end of the scale and the sound of them is something rather thin. They are like thin and crispy. I think thin and crispy is a good way to describe them. For the side buttons, I like how they protrude out by quite a bit makes it easier to click. I did notice that these have quite a fair bit of post travel for both the front and back side button. For the scroll wheels, I say they feel rather nice with quite a nice amount of resistance between each step. It's a nice looking scroll wheel and the pattern on the tracks feel nice and grippy. The scroll clicks need quite a bit of force, which is not something I necessarily like. That's because with hard scroll clicks, it tends to throw off my aim in intense gaming moments. But that's purely because I usually have ping assigned to the scroll click. Holding off the mouse is good, it's similar to what you feel when you hold a ping pong ball. It gives quite a bit of friction when you hold the mouse. It's a rather dry coating and it's almost as if like your sweat evaporates off this coating much quicker. If you feel that this coating is not grippy enough for you, 
the mouse does come with a set of grip tapes which you can use. Oh, and something to note, if you feel that the mouse curves in way too much, you can basically fill up the sides just a little bit by applying the grip tape here on these two points. Stated weight of the Atlantis Mini Pro on the website and on the box is 51 grams. But on my weighing scale, it shows 53.1. Lamzu, care to explain? The Lamzu Atlantis Mini has the PAW 3395 sensor. This is a sensor you're gonna hear me mention a lot on this channel because a lot of gaming mice use that particular sensor. It's the latest sensor that is widely available for companies to purchase from Pixar Imaging. That is the company that produces mouse sensors. It's a great sensor. It goes up to 26,000 DPI. There's motion sync if these two things matter to you. And you can adjust the lift off distance on Lemzu's software. Overall, my experience with all mice that use this sensor, I've never had any problems with it. Highest pulling rate on this mouse with the standard dongle that comes with it goes up to 1000 Hz. If you want to go any higher, you gotta get Lamzu's 4K dongle. That lets you go to 2000 Hz and 4000 Hz. This one. There is a version of this mouse that comes with the 4K dongle, but the only colorway that is available for that version is black. Because I like white mice, what I did with my order is I got the Atlantis Mini Pro that is compatible with the 4K dongle. And I got the 4K dongle separately. This one. If you go onto Lamzu's website right now, you'll notice that there are three colorway options for the dongle to choose from. At the time when I got this mouse, this was the only color option available. But on the website, you can get this, a white version, and a black one. And this is what the box looks like. Battery life lasts for 100 hours at 1000 Hz, or at least that's what it says on the box. You see, the strange thing about Lamzu is that they never put the battery life hours on their website, which is... um. Kind of weird. Some people have mentioned that they did experience bad battery life performance on their units, but this might have been fixed with a firmware update. I'm not too sure about this. My experience, I didn't have any issues. I thought the battery life was fine. And of course, if you're going to run it at higher polling rates, you'll expect much less hours out of this mouse. The skates that come with this mouse are good. I changed mine to the wider ones they've included in the box just for experience. And there's also the dot skates you can try out. Overall, the quality of the skates that they provide are very good. Sensor placement for the Atlantis Mini falls right at the deepest point of the curve. So quite naturally, that's where your thumb would be. And having the sensor aligned with your thumb, that is the point where I feel I have the most control over the mouse. It's the point that feels most comfortable for me. So with this sensor placement, ultra lightweight design, smooth mouse skates, and contoured shape, the mouse feels very quick to react with. So in conclusion, let's go through some of the things I like about this mouse. Dedicated DPI button and an on and off switch. That's convenient. Claw focus mouse to their lineup. It helps people make a clearer decision on which mouse is for them. Because with some brands, you feel like quite a few of their mice are tuned towards the same person. So with Lamzu having a mouse specifically for claw grip users, this is a clear way for people to figure out which mouse is for them. Right now they have the Lamzu Thorn, the Atlantis, and more recently they released the Maya, which is a mouse I really want to try and it comes with that grey and black colorway. I think it looks it looks really good. And lastly, the mouse feels very lightweight. There are lighter options available in the market, but for me, this is very light and I don't need it to be any lighter than this. So what are some of the things that can be improved with this mouse? The post travel on the side buttons, I think that should be fixed because it feels like it's a hair away from feeling mushy. With this simple design in this colorway, I can't help but feel that this mouse looks like a toy. The black version though, that looks much more serious than this. I very much like this mouse to have a bit of a design refresh. If you check out the Maya on Lemzu's website, you see how they design the bottom side of the mouse. The PCB has a lot of fine details. It looks very cool. Compared to this, the PCB, which is that white portion on the inside that you see, it looks rather cheap on the inside. I like the direction that Lemzu is going with their mouse. If you see the Atlantis, which is one of their first ever designs. It looks like this, but if you look at the Thorn, which is in more recent months, it 
recently came out, it looks like this. And if you go onto Lamzu's website and look at the Maya, you can see how much their design language has developed over time. It looks really good. What do I think of its value? Well, this mouse in particular goes for $91.99 on the website. Sometimes you might even find it on sale. As someone whose grip preference leans towards the relaxed claw, and palm grips, I do not get much value out of this mouse just because of that. I have to say that it was a rather different and interesting experience using this mouse. And I did enjoy myself trying something different. For people who use regular and aggressive claw grip, I would imagine that you would very much enjoy using this mouse. I do have friends who use the aggressive claw grip and absolutely love the Atlantis Mini. These are just some of my thoughts and experience with the mouse. Maybe you would find it comfortable using a palm grip and a fingertip grip, which I'm sure there are some gamers who use the mouse with those grip styles. You know, designing a mouse specifically for one gaming genre is one thing. Designing a mouse that is specific for one grip type is another. And for people out there who use the claw or aggressive claw grip, this would feel like something that was specially made for you. If you notice know over the years, all those social comments asking big companies to please make a mini version, please give us software that doesn't eat up our CPU, make a mouse with this function, that function, all these little things. That's something that big brands would not do or take a much longer time to implement. And I'd say it makes gamers grateful for all the small companies that are coming up with their own products. Because those companies create more options for gamers and they add a lot of value in their products. However, some small brands do struggle with quality control, especially with day one launches. I'll give them time and I wouldn't be surprised if you see some of those names sponsoring big esports events in the future. I digress, let's go back to how I feel about the mouse. I can't help but feel that this mouse was made for someone else. But for that someone who uses the claw grip or aggressive claw grip, this mouse is absolutely brilliant. This is a mouse I can imagine a specific segment of gamers enjoying and will continue to support Lamzu with future versions of the mouse. Atlantis V2 next year perhaps. So let me know in the comments below, is this a mouse that appeals to you or maybe to someone you know? Very grateful for all of you to take your time out to watch my content and of course your comments. Honestly, it is something I never imagined myself capable of doing. It's very nice of you. Thank you so much. One more thing before you go, with every product that you buy, always remember to update the firmware as soon as you get it. That is all for now. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.